and welcome to the Evolve with Emily Show YouTube channel. The best way to support the show on this YouTube channel is to subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and or share it with a friend. I hope that you guys enjoy this episode in whichever way you choose to support the show. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. I hope that today's message and episode brings some bit of positive change to your life. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Evolve with Emily show. I am your host, Emily Hayden, and today we have two guests on. We have Chelsea Townley, who is a cat mom. She's a certified clinical hemodialysis technician, a nursing student, a domestic violence advocate, and she's here to tell people that they can choose to live in the light. It's hard, it's messy, but it is possible. I also have Stephanie Vanderlind. She is a registered nurse of four years and licensed in four different states. She has been a travel nurse for a year now and is absolutely loving the opportunities that it has given her. She is also a licensed cosmetologist in Michigan and she has figure skated since she was seven and still gets on the ice now and again. She also just competed in her first bodybuilding show, Naughty Revolution, and it's been a month and a half now and she actually won each division as well as the overall. So she's excited to see where that journey can take her and she is a Siberian husky uh, mama as well a little dog mom so welcome to the show guys Chelsea and Stephanie I'm so excited to have you both yeah I'm excited to be here yeah so you guys both just attended the Evolve retreat which was in Houston Texas and we had such a really incredible time and you know I'm so thankful that you guys were able to both make it there Chelsea I know it's pretty easier for you you're I think (laughs) like an hour drive or so Um, but Stephanie for making the flight and so I just kind of want to get into it so I was so happy to see uh, that you guys were actually together way before the retreat even started Um, Chelsea I heard that you picked them up from the airport tell me about that I did um So we were talking about the retreat and Trish reached out to me and was just like, Hey, are you going? And I was like, maybe, I don't know yet. Some things I got to, you know, figure out. Um, And so when I said, yes, I was going, she was like, well, do you just want to room together? And I was like, sure. (laughs) So, um, you know, when I found out uh, Stephanie landed closer to me, saw Trish and headed on over to Sugarland. That's awesome. And uh, Stephanie, how was it being picked up by a complete stranger from the airport? <laughs> well, it didn't really feel that way, you know. Aww. Like I think um, Trish Trish reached out to me maybe a month or so before. Um, I think almost even before you announced it. Um, but yeah, so I've been talking to her like through Instagram and stuff for quite a while, and then I think she actually put together the group chat between the three of us, um, and we've been talking for you know a couple weeks before. So going and meeting her in person, having her pick me up at the airport. Like it was weird, but not weird at the same time. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Cause, and a lot of us, we've all been on the same coaching calls through the Evolve X community or even the Evolve X program, you know, coaching calls. So it's like, we see each other every single, you know, every couple of times a month. And then we also are talking about real life, deep things. So it's like, by the time you actually see each other, we've actually gone deeper than a lot of people have gone you know, with their friends that are in person as well. Um, and that kind of goes along with, you know, Stephanie, I had asked you, like, what is your overall message you really want to share? And you had shared that you believe we should place that most importance on in-person connections because the sense of community and fulfillment you can get from meaningful conversations, physical touch, and spiritual connections is indescribable. So you just wanted to encourage people to push yourself and go out there and build that community. So with that being your message and with you just having that experience of the Evolve Retreat, um, can you tell me a little bit about like how that impacted you and just how how that was beneficial in your life? I mean, it, it goes along with the past, you know, couple of years of what like social media media and the world has turned into. I mean, it seems like everything is through a screen. Mm-hmm. Um, like my job is um, become more of like telehealth and mm-hmm. it just. It honestly makes me a little bit more frustrated um, that I'm always looking at a screen versus looking at a patient. Mm. Um, so to be able to come to this retreat and have actual in-person 
like people looking me in the eye, having deep conversations, making you actually feel like you're, you're heard and you're being listened to and they can understand, like they might not know what kind of, you know, what your walk of life is or what you're going through necessarily, but they can, you know, connect with you on a deep level and know that like they can go through it with you and understand, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was really like, I'm not a very touchy feely person Mm -hmm. by any means. So some of the stuff we were doing was very new to me Mm -hmm. and to be open to that was really amazing. And I mean, it helped me, you know, find pieces and things of myself. I didn't know I could be in touch with, Mm -hmm. um, which was really great. And come out of that weekend, just feeling so fulfilled. Um, I mean, like Chelsea and I had, we were partnered through the weekend too, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, we had some really deep conversations and and realizations and understandings, um, that was really beautiful to see, Mm -hmm. honestly, and to see in other people. So I feel like it was just as much for me Mm -hmm. to, to feel full as much as it was like seeing other people feel full as well. Yeah, there was something really beautiful about witnessing each person's uh, just journey and their growth throughout the whole weekend from like day one of everyone kind of saying hi to get to each other and, you know, having a little bit of like this awkward like, OK, how is this going to go kind of thing to like the the last day you would have thought that we were all friends for forever. Like people watching us when we had dinner and went out afterwards, they were all they all definitely thought that we had been friends for years. I was like, no, we literally met like a few days ago in person. <laughs> Um, Chelsea, what about you? How was, you know, what, what's your take on all of that? For me, it, it, it was people to be vulnerable with them. Um, I struggle with being too strong sometimes and kind of this like positive demeanor and like, okay, let's just roll with the flow. But, um, getting deep into some of our journal prompts and, you know, there was moments where I was like, cry my eyes out. I think you even looked at me and you're like, I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I needed it. I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, how can I expect people to trust me when I don't all the way trust them to, Mm. to lift me up or, you know, to not be judgmental or even just to hold space. Like that's such a big thing for people. And I think there's something really beautiful in letting those walls down because that's where the connection for me, it was formed. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'm sitting here in a circle of what I've never really met, like some of them, you know, online. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things I, I just recently lost my mom to domestic violence, and that was something that was really on my heart over the weekend. And, um, you know, having these women come up and hug me and lift me up, um, it was, it was really beautiful experience. Yeah. And I know, you know, part of your heart's mission too, is to be an advocate for that and to be able to, you know, be a voice for people who may not understand, you know, how to handle certain situations. So, you know, what, what are some things that you're looking forward to maybe in the future, kind of like future projection type of goals of what you would like to be doing when, in regards to that? In regards to that, I would like to some, you know, somehow have a business where I'm teaching women how to, I mean, similar to Evolve X, like how to identify your core values. That's a massive one because if you don't value yourself, you don't love yourself, then you're open to receiving whatever type of love comes your way. And that's not necessarily love. Mm. Um, You have to love yourself first. And that love starts within and it starts from the source, from our God. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to teach them things like that. I want to teach them things like, um, you know, Mm self-defense, financial skills, Mm -hmm. how to get out of these situations. You know, a lot of them lack financial resources. A lot of them lack an escape plan. And and that's hard to go into a relationship thinking like you need an escape plan. But if you start to see things going south, you might need to put it together. Um, So, you know, once I get a base income established, I would really love to be able to offer my services for free to the women of domestic violence. Mm some capacity and then also um looking at starting a nonprofit um in my mom's name. That's awesome. That's really beautiful. And I think it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's an unspeakable thing. Like it's an unimaginable thing that you went through, right? And I can't even imagine going through that, but for you to take that and turn something really beautiful out of it, I think is just going to bring a lot of life 
to this world, a lot of life to these women's lives, right? Like they're going to get their lives back. So I just want to encourage you that I love your heart for it. I love your passion for it. And I think it's going to be really incredible because you're coming from such a good place of wanting to help and, you know, wanting to really guide these women in a, in a good way. So um, last thing on this, what would you say to a woman that is listening right now and she's in a difficult spot? She sees her relationship headed towards um, more of an abusive manner and she's just in a tough spot of loving this person and not wanting to leave but she feels like sh something might need to change what would be your advice to her you have to love yourself more you have to know that better is out there because love is not abuse mm -hmm. period in any capacity it's not mental physical emotional you know we all have things that we struggle with we all have things that we carry with us from childhood but at the end of the day you have to learn to make those changes right so that you can love in a capacity that is love um not um not coming from a selfish place so you know and women are, are you know it's not just men that are abusers women can be abusers too mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of it is they really need some deep healing and you're not solely responsible for that, mm. you know, um, and reach out, talk to people about mm. it, talk to someone, your best friend, talk to, talk to a stranger that, I mean, anybody just mm. talk to somebody because, you know, it could be life or death, honestly. Yeah. Thank you. And I think that's so important to say. And I definitely agree with that. You know, don't date in isolation um, because sometimes you want to keep everything to yourself. But if you were actually to be open about these things, if you aren't able to identify it, maybe somebody else in your life would be able to help you identify that better if you would actually give them the full picture of what's going on. You know, I think sometimes we feel like we got to put up this front. We got to just pretend that everything's fine and tell them only the good things about what's going on. And sometimes it comes from a place of wanting to have privacy within the relationship. But I think it's important to have, you know, at least that one or those two people, whether it's a trusted friend or a parent, that you let them know what's really going on, especially in this kind of case where you feel like there may be some form of abuse, like you mentioned, whether it's emotional, physical, um, you know, verbal, there's so many different forms, you know, it doesn't always come in the form of physical. Um, so just being able to recognize that, being able to be open about that, because then hopefully they can help you create that plan of action to, you know, remove yourself from that situation. And I love that your initial response is self-love because it's true. Like when you get to a point of, loving yourself in, in not like in this facetious way, but in this like deep, respectful and honorable way where you really see yourself right, you won't tolerate certain things in your life. So I just definitely echo that. Stephanie, do you have any input on that? Because I kind of see you're like shaking your head and wondering what's kind of going on in your head. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've had recent family things come up that I, I think that really speaks to. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because it's pretty fresh, but um, loving yourself is, is I think where it, it starts from, like, if you don't have that, you're going to have everything else go wrong in your life. And I mean, Chelsea and I've had, you know, multiple conversations over that weekend and I just keep telling her, like, I'm so impressed at your strength. Yeah. Like it's incredible to me. I've, I've not ever had to deal with something, um, so traumatizing mm -hmm. and I just, I commend you for, for how you've come out of that so quickly. And I know that's still a fresh thing too, but yeah, to have something so wonderful, to have this grand idea to, to get that going is very impressive to me. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so one thing I'm hearing is that, you know, loving yourself is important, right? So why don't we talk about that? What are some ways that you guys have found uh, to practice loving yourself more? Because I, I think there there's people listening who might feel like I'm so far away from loving myself, right? I don't like how I look. I don't like what I'm doing, right? And so they, they are in this hard spot of saying, how do I begin to love myself? What are some things that I can do? So do you guys have each maybe like a few things that you could share with them? So for me, um, a lot of it has gone back to prioritizing my health as, as far as, you know, fitness and nutrition. You know, during nursing school, I gained a lot of weight. Um, you know, Stephanie, I think you can attest to how nursing school goes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I gained a lot of weight. I was driving through the drive-thru 
three times a week or three times a day. And um, that's not self-love. Like, slow down. Get present. Like, you know, or, or take the time to throw together a few things throughout the week that you can just grab and go and pop in the microwave. That's healthier than going through a drive through so you may think that you don't have the time, but when you're suffering from health conditions because you didn't have the time, then you're out of time, wow. you know? Yeah, that's so good. Um, journaling prompts or, or journaling in general has really, really helped me to reflect on my day, things that I'm going through. And it's been a really nice form of just being able to express how I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just focusing more on being around people that, truly love me cutting out toxic friendships toxic acquaintances you know any anything that's negative I I don't believe in like false positivity you know I like the real conversations Mm -hmm. if I'm doing something dumb call me out (laughs) and vice versa and I'm really grateful that you know the people I have in my life my family my best friends we can have those hard conversations and be like yo you're being really dumb about this situation Mm -hmm. and then it's all love like Mm -hmm. that's it at the end of the day you know friends that are negative and take everything personally that's again that's not love that's mm-hmm. coming from gardenness and selfishness essentially yeah that's so good stephanie what about you um i think it comes down to like consciously making decisions mm-hmm. um back when i started the program the evolve x program um, i think back in january mm-hmm. that was something that i was I mean, I had been working on, like I had done the first prompt challenge in the fall um, and really kind of honed in on like macros and nutrition and things. Mm -hmm. But coming into January, it's like I still felt like I needed more of a a mental shift. Um, I was still just constantly like pessimistic, um, always passive aggressive reacting to things. And I'm like, I'm I'm recognizing that that's an issue and I want to start to change that. So the program, I mean, you start thinking more positively, like you have to stop yourself in the negative thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then like you say, you know, I'm going to counteract that and reach me my brain with three positive things. Mm-hmm. Um, what am I grateful for? So, I mean, I, I think it starts there with, I have to recognize the things that I'm doing wrong, mm-hmm. the things that don't make me feel great. Um, whether that's nutrition, whether that's, you know, just going through the motions of life mm-hmm. for me, I mean, choosing, you know, what like areas to work in that I'm going to have people to support me mm-hmm. or places I can go work out at that I'm, I'm going to enjoy, mm-hmm. um, trails that I can go hiking on with my dog. You know, like I, I need to have those couple of things that are going to make me feel good that I'm going to have either time to myself, mm-hmm. you know, and actually have time to reflect or to have time with others where I'm going to actually be connecting with those people that I'm spending time with. So I'm very conscious about who and what I'm placing my time into to make myself, um, I don't, I don't want to say like feel good, but that form of self-love. Yeah, right? Absolutely. And I think, you know, what I'm hearing you guys say is that self-love really is tied to self-discipline because mm-hmm. when you are practicing excellence, when you're practicing being yourself, that's when you are truly loving yourself the most, right? It's it's loving of yourself to go and get a workout in. It's loving of yourself to fill your plate with nutritious foods that are actually going to make you feel good from the inside out versus make you feel sluggish, right? Um, it's loving for you to say, hey, I'm actually not going to have, you know, four or five plus drinks out with you guys tonight. I'm going to have one drink because I enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy it with you guys and then go home because it's actually more self-loving because I want to enjoy the drink, but I also want to get up and go for a walk in the morning and not have a headache and I want to feel good and I want to start the day off positive, right? So it's hard because oftentimes the loving thing I found is often the hard thing in the moment. It's kind of the harder option in the moment to choose. But what I found is by consistently practicing, even in small ways, you know, choosing that harder option, all of a sudden your brain starts to get trained to, I always choose the hard option because I know it's good for me. You know, like, for example, Chelsea, I saw that you meal prepped leading into the weekend and that was like such an extensive meal prep. 
Um, and I, I love that you were like, you know what, I am going to come into this prepared. I'm going to have what I need on hand, knowing that we'd eat together and have meals together as well. But just that effort that you put in there to, to have that ready to go, I think, showed a lot of progress. Um, and, and Stephanie, I know for you, um, you mentioned actually at the uh, retreat, we saw this reel where you actually went through a huge weight loss journey, which like you being this like bikini, you know, overall winner, no one would ever even realize that you had gone through that. So, um, and I feel like you guys both can bond over the whole nursing school thing and just like the time that it requires and how hard it is to prioritize yourself. And I know we have a lot of students and even nurses that listen to this show as well. So what would you guys both say to them? Um, Stephanie, if you want to go first this time, what would you say to them who are in school or they just have a really demanding job like that, who are saying like, I'll do it after nursing school, I'll do it after college or whatever it is. I mean, that was the same kind of mindset that I had. I mean, I started that kind of mindset back in high school. It's like, you know, well, once I'm done with school, I'll do it. Once I'm done with college, once I'm done with nursing school, you, you have to throw that out the window. Like there's just no other option. You have to throw that out the window, start realizing this, like you can start today. Like it's, you don't have to go from, you know, having such a hard time nursing school, having a, a crappy nutrition plan to um, counting macros, right? There's there's a process that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. So it's making the, making the change today, like maybe for dinner, like maybe instead of going through the drive through, I'm going to go um, to the store, pick up some chicken, pick up a couple of vegetables that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Cause you're not going to do this if you don't enjoy it. Right. Like there has to be some kind of vegetable or something that you enjoy. Do that and start with that. Make at least one choice a day. Mm -hmm. That's going to move you forward. I love that. Um, that's so practical. And, and yeah, and I mean the way the way that I started with with um, tracking things was I love pasta. Macaroni is my favorite food. Like I can't just get rid of that all of a sudden. Um, so I found like you know a, a tortellini or something that I like that I can actually count and realize the portion sizes, right? So I could still have that thing that I really enjoyed. Um, but in a smaller portion mm -hmm. and maybe that's a little sad at first, <laughs> but, <laughs> but those, are small, those are the small steps that you need to try and start taking yeah. to, to get to that point that you want to get to. Mm -hmm. Um, and I actually, my phone call with my mother the other day, she gave me a little tidbit of encouragement, um, that one of the nurses that I used to work with, um, has lost like 20, 25 pounds now. Wow. Um, some of the like photos or reels or stuff that I posted on Instagram and she went, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. That's awesome. And that's I needed that, you know, yeah. that, that, but it, it starts small. Yeah. So start small, reach out for help and, and go from there. That's so, that's awesome. And Chelsea, what about you? So as someone who was started this journey third semester, mm -hmm. um, and honestly bulk grew up, like, don't make it so hard on yourself. I think everyone wants to get fancy. Yeah. And I know for me, I got a little overwhelmed with like organic versus non-organic, GMO versus GMO, you know, tracking macros or meal plan or whatever. Just start small, start mm -hmm. small, do eggs and, you know, toast or oatmeal, um, things that are easy, especially if you're on the go 24 seven. So if you're in school full time, you're working full time, you're trying to hit the gym X amount of times a week, start small and have those things ready to go. And then also, um, have, you know, things that you can carry with you just in case that, you know, you're like, Oh man, I'm super hungry. I haven't had time to eat. I don't have time to heat up my food, carry small, like protein bars in your purse or in your backpack. Um, I would bulk prep on Sundays. So I would make a bunch of chicken. I would make a bunch of like lean ground beef. And then I would, you know, cut up my veggies and things like that. Um, veggies, you know, I would kind of have to do like twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then another thing, plan out. Like if you know you're going out with your friends or you're going out with your classmates, plan that out ahead of time. You know, allow yourself to enjoy that moment. Don't beat yourself up about it because you had a bad meal. Mm -hmm. Foods aren't good or bad. They they just are and whatever emphasis you put on it is what you're going to get out of it. But, you know, be honest with yourself. Are you justifying those bad meals every other day mm -hmm. or, you know, making an allowance once a 
week to enjoy the moment with your friends, your classmates, your coworkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's so helpful because it's not about, you know, all of a sudden being on this super rigid program where you're perfect and you never have meals off. That's honestly not realistic for a lot of people. So I think giving those practical tools of what to do in the hard spot or like with on the weekend is very, very helpful. Um, And then Stephanie, you said something that actually, you know, kind of got my brain going. You mentioned how you mentioned how it felt so good that someone back home who's still in nursing, like was inspired by what you were doing. And oftentimes I will have people ask the question. They're like, I really want to inspire and motivate people. How can I do that? And I I always tell them it starts with you. It literally always starts with you. So you can't promote and you can't teach on or share something that you're not actively living out, right? When you're actively living it out, that means it's really true for your life. So that's why when I ask you guys these things, you're able to share because you've walked through it in your life. You're currently walking through it in your life, you know? So I think if people want to be, you know, that source of motivation and inspiration, which even if it's just one person from your work or two people from your community or church or whatever, you're changing people's lives and that's amazing and it's so amazing because if you've gone through that transformation yourself you know how it's literally like making their lives so much better than it ever would have been so don't ever get uh consumed with a number on a screen or a following or you know these fake numbers on an app that we've all kind of made up like go in real life and you know be that example lead by example by leading with your actions and I know both of you are just very strong leaders and both of your communities I've Chelsea I've heard the same of you know friends and family that have changed a lot of their habits and are asking you questions now and that's what's cool is like you start this journey as you know maybe you're the first one in your circle to start this journey and it feels new you feel like a fish out of water and then all of a sudden you look back and you're like wait people are asking me questions like that has to be pretty pretty empowering for you guys to finally have that like turnaround of people making you their source. Yeah, it's surreal. You know, I I went to work one day and um I would have a nurse asking me like, Hey, do you count macros and this and that? And then, you know, I would see people coming in with like their gallons of water and and they used to not ever drink water. That's <laughs> awesome. So, really dope and really inspiring. And I hope they keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a couple of um people ask me like how I did it or what I'm eating. And I mean, it's, it's different for everybody. Right. So I I can't give you one thing that is the answer. Right. Uh, It it is interesting to see. And honestly, it makes me a little nervous because I feel like, I mean, I've been doing what works for me and they are coming to me and asking me for advice, but I'm like, I don't necessarily know what's going to work for you. I'm not necessarily trained in it. Right. I've had the experience, but I don't have like formal education. Um, So I'm like, I can give you little tidbits and stuff. But like, don't hold me to it, you know? Oh, Um, yeah, for sure. And I I think more than anything, it's just them being able to, like, look up at you as, like, a role model, so to speak, in that way, you know? So a lot of people at work are even amazed at at my, like, discipline to say no to something. So it's like when I was still um, before the show on prep and they're coming around with, like, oh, it's, you know, uh, whatever, somebody's birthday or something and they're handing out candy and I'm like, as much as I want it, I can't have it. I'm like, no, no, thank you. Uh, Or even like for nurses week, they're coming around with ice cream. And I'm like, that's great. No. And I love ice cream so much, (laughs) but I'm going to have to say, no, I'm like, there's, there's too many carbs in that to fit in the numbers right now. So I'm like, for this, it's going to be a no. (laughs) And they're like, oh, okay, well, I'll have yours. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No one's mad about that. Well, Mm -hmm. let's get into the retreat weekend. So the very first day we had our day at Alpha Land, right? So we had the morning devotional. And then before we did the workout, we actually did breath work, visualization, meditation. So I kind of want to hear from y'all's experiences, uh, what that was like for you. Do you have experience doing that? Um, And just kind of what are some of the things, if you care to share, that may have come up or just how it was to connect with other people in those moments. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go. Okay. I know you've got a really good one for this. Um, <laughs> which yeah, I'm impressed by. But um yeah, it's it's not something that I normally do. Meditation is completely new to me, but actually focusing on your breath and, and getting to a point where you're so relaxed and so in tune with yourself and what your thoughts are, um, what you're seeing, what you're thinking, hearing, all of that got me to a, such a point of calm and peace. Um, and I, I didn't necessarily like have any visions or anything 
um, necessarily, but throughout the weekend, hearing different people's experiences though, because we did this twice, right? So we did that that day and the next day. I more so saw or was thinking like of myself being lifted up towards God um, with a light in my chest. Um, and throughout that weekend, it had been kind of a theme for me that people kept calling me a light, like in our prayer circle kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that word kept coming out of people's mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm like, I want to, I want to believe this and I want to, you know, see it and act on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still kind of a new thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, you know, I'm still, still kind of working through that, but yeah. It was just really amazing to to hear those like affirmations um, myself. Yeah, I think it's really powerful to have people around you say out loud like what they see in you, right? Because when you all of a sudden have five, seven, multiple people telling you we we all see the same thing and they don't know that they're saying that to you, like that's mm -hmm. really powerful, right? And I think it just kind of shows you a different attribute of who you are. And I think it's something that it just is who you are. So it'll just be you finally like capturing that and taking a hold of that and standing like very confidently and firm in that, knowing that that's what you bring to a room. So it was really cool to kind of just see your personal growth, but that that is who you are in the group. You know, you are that bright light and we have a lot of those in the group, but I think you just have such a unique and different energy that you share with the group. And I love the fact actually that you're not like the touchy feely person because when we hugged at the end of the retreat, like the very last hug, we hugged probably 20 times <laughs> but like the very last one when we were saying goodbye I was like wow that was such a good hug and you shared something with me you said you're not really a hugger I think that's no, crazy no. yeah no I thought it was a great hug no I told you my mother would appreciate that so <laughs> oh that's good well Chelsea I know that you have done some meditation before and you're actually somebody that pretty much always gets visions, which I too am inspired by, but everyone's different. Not everyone gets visions or sees those. They have different experiences. Um, so Chelsea, share yours with us. Oh yeah. I do have some pretty vivid um, meditations. I didn't realize this was something I could even tap into until like January when I um, purchased a breathwork program from our friend, Justin. Mm -hmm. And um but that's kind of when I started feeling like the peace and like, I would feel the sun rising and like just warmth on my body, like laying in the, in the grass and letting the sun hit me. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the retreat this weekend, I saw a, or this past weekend, rather, I saw a Phoenix that, I mean, that would rise up and it was two dimensional. It wasn't like a 3d Phoenix, but, um, it had like the color, its tail was the color of like all of the chakras, like running down in a line. Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes I'll get things like that. Sometimes I will get things that are like an actual movie um, wow. behind like a veil of colors. Um, I've seen some things like in, as odd as this is going to sound in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I'll, a lot of times I'll see the colors like coming into my center. So sometimes it'll be indigo, sometimes it'll be orange, you know, white. Um, yellow's kind of rare. I don't see that one a lot. Green sometimes. Um, and if people know anything about the chakras, they are associated with different energy centers within the body. So green's associated with your heart chakra. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say purple is associated with your crown, which is more like intuition, spirituality. Mm -hmm. Um, I see that a lot. And then blue is something I see often. And that is your throat chakra. So learning to use your voice. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So yeah. those are pretty yeah, that's, it's, it, you know, always interesting hearing everybody's individual, you know, response from a certain, whether it's a, even just a question or an exercise or even, you know, no matter what we're doing, it's like everybody has such a different way of uh, processing and understanding and different perspectives, which I think are really powerful to share. Um, so after that, we actually did a, a small group sharing exercise, which I guess you guys were partnered together for. Um, so how was it being on the receiving end when you have, you know, let's say for Stephanie, like Chelsea in front of you, like sharing what she's sharing in front of you. Um, how did that connect you guys? What were you like thinking and processing through in that moment? Um, and just kind of give me a little bit about your experience with that. I mean, I was pretty just kind of astounded, I guess that mm -hmm. like that was even a thing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'm like a phoenix. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> totally. 
<laughs> like I'm just, you know, calming down basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're seeing all these things. So I'm, I mean, I'm just very interested to, to hear all that. And I'm like, well, if, if you're seeing these things, what is everybody else having experiences with? And right. like, should I be, you know, working a little bit harder to, to try and figure this out? Oh, um, I hope, you know, that's not the answer. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, I know it's, I know it's different for everybody. I think it's something that I could do more work on in just a sense that like, it's, it's going to be something that's going to be very helpful to, to reduce even stress levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really focusing on breath work and stuff. And I, you know, that's why I was really excited to share it with you guys. Cause I know a lot of people maybe have never done these things before. And especially if it's your first time, sometimes it's just a lot of work to get yourself to simply sit still. And sometimes it's literally just about recognizing, oh, I'm totally off on a different trail of thoughts right now, rather than breathing, rather than, you know, focusing on my breath. So just being able to say, okay, let me take those thoughts and bring them back over here. Let me focus on my breath. So giving you guys that experience of like, hey, this is what it's like to start practicing these things, I think was important because it is such an amazing like stress relief. It's amazing to just focus presence in general so you can really get out of the anxiety, focusing on the future, the depression, focusing on the past or hopelessness of the future. Just get out of your head completely and get into stillness and presence. It really can be so powerful. So I hope that is a um, practice that you're able to continue practicing. Yeah. I mean, even if the the next day with the Wim Hof breathing, Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that was like even more intense. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think I was actually like the last one to open my eyes for that because I had never felt so relaxed in so long and like I don't want to move from this like I know we need to go do the cold plunge (laughs) yeah um, but I'd like to stay here another like five minutes please yeah yeah totally I feel that way often after uh, breathwork meditation sometimes I just don't want to leave because it's so peaceful Mm -hmm. yeah I feel you on that Chelsea how about you for me it again it's I feel like I can hold space for people pretty well Mm -hmm. um come from a place of being non-judgmental because I mean there's three sides to every story and everyone has different life paths that they walk but for me it's getting vulnerable and trusting other people to hold that same space for me and then that's kind of like a cycle right like if I don't trust them then I'm walking in with that energy that they don't trust me and so um that that was a big thing that I got out of the retreat and I'm very grateful that I did because a lot of the girls and I like we still just you know comment and hype each other up and um, you know, share each other's struggles, things that they're going through. And that to me, like just taps into so much love. Like, mm. you know, I, I love that. Um, so yeah, it was just really being vulnerable and sharing. And I'm grateful it was Stephanie. Cause I feel like she, she is a light. She does hold very non-judgmental space. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I'll write sometimes about my meditation experiences on my Instagram because I want people to see that this, it literally exists within you. It may not be as as mine, Mm -hmm. um, but people come to their own understandings. I know for me in my brain, I can go down some rabbit holes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it really, it's like, is that really the situation though? Mm -hmm. Like you can get that clarity and just like peace. Then you're like, oh, it's not as big of a deal as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have all that anxiety about it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, anxiety is something that a lot of people are dealing with right now for, you know, a number of different reasons. But the more practices that we can find and implement into our lives to take ourselves out of this overly stressed, overwhelmed and anxious state and back into this present and loving state, we can think about life, plan for life, adjust to life so much better in so much, you know, in such a better way than if we were operating out of this anxious, you know, feeling and mentality. Um, so, okay. Then we went to, Al- so we were at Alpha Land, but then we actually went to the workout part of Alpha Land. I know you guys were really excited to experience all that is Alpha Land. Um, what, what was your thoughts of it? Is it what you thought it was? Oh, it's a freaking playground. That was so It was better. <laughs> it was better. That's awesome. It was so good. It, I mean, it had everything you could dream of. It, it, uh, so for me, like I want to get into competition, powerlifting or strongman competitions. And so I saw this big tire out there and I was like, dude, I want to flip that. And I tried and I couldn't flip it. So then I went to the smaller tire <laughs> 
And then you came out there and you're like, no, flip the big one. And I was like, no, I can't. And you're like, yes, you can. And I'm like, no, I tried earlier. And you're like, yes, you can flip it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really coached me through being able to do that, which made me feel like a badass. You are um, a badass. I'm just here to be like, look, <laughs> this is what you already are. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, they had punching bags. They had three gyms. It was, I was mind blown. They had a restaurant, a patio. Like, yeah, right. Yeah. That, and I think it, that was kind of what happened with a lot of us, though, because you had us partner up um, to, to a certain extent, right? Yeah. And it kind of, we didn't purposely do this, but Becky and I paired up. So Becky's in bikini prep, and then I was, you know, a couple weeks out or post. Um, and so I think after the posing clinic, the two of us got together. Uh, and did a lower body workout and that was I think so powerful for both of us because it, it, it over the weekend I mean I'm, I'm gaining this confidence right so then going to that workout and pushing her but also pushing myself I just like felt so much in my element I'm like maybe maybe this is something I should you know look into I'm always like taking reels now and stuff videos and stuff and and I think I try not to be annoying with it, but I think some people actually were really appreciative of that to actually have some documentation um, of their experiences and stuff. Yeah. Uh, We all all need that friend. Yeah. (laughs) I am that friend. Um, (laughs) But I think Becky was like really happy and appreciative of having somebody to to push her and maybe needing that at that moment. Oh, Um, absolutely. I just had so much fun doing that. Like, all the equipment that they had and, and the vibe of the gym and, you know, with one being air conditioned and one being more outside, you've got all these different options mm-hmm. to go about it. Yeah. So, yeah. It's pretty I, awesome. I, I, yeah. They have something pretty much for everyone. So I'm glad you guys were able to get in there and get a great workout in. See, and then I, I and the shopping being there. Oh That's yeah. Cool. Cause of then course. I just don't spend too much money. <laughs> of course. For me, it was like getting the confidence to try new machines that I'll look at in the gym and I'll like, man, that looks kind of cool. Like, what's that about? But I won't really have the confidence in myself to go and try it. Mm -hmm. So at Alpha Land, I gained that confidence and I would just, you know, grab somebody from the, from the group, like Hannah or one of the Sarah's or Mm -hmm. Stephanie, like, how do I do this? And so they would show me and kind of coach me through it. And that was really awesome. So now I have the confidence to go and try those things on my own, in my own gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. And that's the power of community too, right? is having those like safe, non-judgmental people to go to that, you know, will help you. Even if it is a dumb question, you know, people say dumb questions don't exist. They do. And I think we should all laugh at them. Like, don't take life so (laughs) seriously. Right. Like I ask dumb questions all the time and I'll own it. Like, I know it's a dumb question. (laughs) You know, I'd rather ask and find out than just not ask at all. Um, So, okay. Do you guys think that it's possible to evolve in as short as a few days? Yes. (laughs) What do you think was your biggest takeaway from just the entire weekend or maybe one way that you grew personally over the weekend that you feel was like a, like a really great amount of growth for you? I mean, I think it's, uh, the, the confidence factor for myself mm-hmm. and that's kind of what I went into it wanting to kind of figure out. Um, and I'm, I'm a person that I, I really do well with people telling me what I'm doing well that makes sense probably, like, probably one of your love languages I it maybe it is uh we actually Chelsea and I talked about that too okay. but um yeah I I really thrive off of people telling me what I'm doing well and I think that kind of gave me some of that and that that obviously is going to grow my confidence but okay well the path that I'm on um must be the correct path mm-hmm. and so I just have to keep staying the course mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the God will present or, you know, show me the, the opportunities that are going to come. Um, so that was, that was really good. And I, I'm kind of seeing that more so in the days post, like, um, even at work, having more confidence to like, even talk to some of my patients that have no clue how to go about nutrition. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if you're a diabetic, you might want to know what a freaking carb is Mm -hmm. to start with (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah, and how that's going to affect you. Right. But being, you know, like 300 plus pounds and and not understanding this and just thinking that, um, I need these drugs to fix me. Wow. It's like, no, look at this app that I'm using to track everything. Look at this learning opportunity. That's going to show you X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. 
um, about how to actually change your body, make yourself healthier, right? So throughout the weekend, I mean, I'm, I'm getting that confidence and, and seeing that play out in real life now. That's um, awesome. It's really good to see. Yeah. And that's when you know that true transformation really has occurred is when there's actual change in the way that you're showing up in your actions and how you carry yourself. So I think it's cool to see that you're already feeling that. Um, Chelsea, Mm -hmm. what about you? I gained a lot of confidence at this retreat. You know, I, I don't look like a bodybuilder. Um, I can go through down that whole rabbit hole ride of everything that I don't think is, is worthy or that I think society doesn't think is worthy. Um, so me, you know, being in a bikini and the, uh, cold plunge, like that was a big step out of my comfort zone. That's something I really only do around like my closest friends, um, or even like wearing a crop to jujitsu, you know, um, feeling safe enough in my environment that I could do these things and that nobody was judging me for it. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a big takeaway for me. And so now I'm kind of like, who cares? Like, even if people do have something to say, first of all, you're not paying my bills. Yeah. Secondly, you're not feeding. Yeah. And just don't care anymore. I, it feels freedom is a big core value of mine. And one of that being free from the prison of my own mind. Wow. And I think that the retreat really gave me that to just wow. not care anymore, because if it makes me happy, then it's worth it. Yeah. Um, you know, I've already talked about trust being a big takeaway. Um, and then truly community, like getting around people that, like Stephanie said, they may not understand everything you're going through, but you can share some similar interests. And, you know, the very first night it was, who was it? Stuff like me, you, Trish, the Sarahs and Evelyn. Um, we all went out to dinner together and we got deep. Yeah. So that, that's really dope to to put yourself around people who are like-minded. They don't have to believe everything you believe. They can challenge your ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, or they can be like, hey, why don't you look at it from this perspective? Mm-hmm. Or here's a tip if you want to progress in this area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that's really important. I mean, everybody brings different life experiences to it. So, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I, I think I told you um, one of the nights too that it seems to be such an incredible um like attribute I guess I don't know some kind of magical thing about you that you can create such a, a non non-judgmental loving um open space for people like just right off the bat I mean that was the whole point of everybody coming yeah and and to share all the experiences and get so deep so quickly mm-hmm. like how and why are we doing this <laughs> who who's doing this to us because yeah. like well, it never, it never felt so uncomfortable. Mm. You know, it, it was very like, we kind of would go around the table at dinner and, and, you know, where are you from? What's your workout background? Um, your like work background and kind of how did you get led here? Mm. Um, and hearing some of those stories, it's like, it's incredible, you know, I, and, and Evelyn's story too, mm-hmm. with yeah. where she came from, um, just very impressive. I mean, it makes me feel like, okay, well, maybe my struggles aren't so bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but not that they're not valid, right? Mm-hmm. It's incredible what you can create in just that short amount of time. Mm-hmm. So, well, thank you. And kind of similar to your comment about the light, I actually got that comment quite a few times from you guys. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm hearing this. You know, I'm really <laughs> receiving this. And, You know, it's definitely a huge passion of mine is being able to create community because we need each other. We're not meant to live life alone. And I also know that in order to create that community, it does require vulnerability and it does require people having the same heart posture. And, you know, I'm pretty confident that the people coming to my retreats are going to be aligned with me, right? Or else they wouldn't be coming. So getting everybody together, then I'm like, okay, I know that you guys came. I'm the common denominator, but like turn around and look at each other because like that's where it's at you know like you guys really did come to create this thriving community of strong empowered people and you know I just have to say I could not have been more proud I just saw the uh, day three recap uh, Instagram video which I haven't posted yet but I will post it soon 
And uh, man, just looking back on it, I'm like, I am so proud of everyone. I couldn't have been more proud sitting there watching everyone go through the ice plunge, which was, you know, we kind of ended the retreat with that. Then we went to dinner and out later. But for the ice plunge, like I just watched everyone like get themselves ready, take those deep breaths and get in there and conquer this thing that for some people was easier. And for others, it was almost felt like it was impossible. So just seeing everybody as a group, as a collective, overcome that and get through it was just really amazing to see and I don't know if you guys remember um it was actually the other Chelsea and I hope she's okay that I mentioned this now um but she she was struggling through the cold plunge it was not an easy task for her and yet number one she made herself get in that's the huge you know first step and then number two when she was in it and wanted to quit she chose not to and lastly at the end he was like okay you can either dunk or get out and I th- at least the way I was thinking is oh she's gonna get right out and that's fine that's totally makes sense and yet after struggling the whole time looking like she was barely making it she dunks herself and I was just taken back like I was like wow this it's so much more than just about the ice plunge like to me that just shows like the true depth of like her strength as a woman you know so I was really inspired by all of you watching that and I I don't know how it felt for you guys you know being a part of that as well but I was just like I was on a different level of happy and just inspired by you guys yeah I think a couple of people yeah I I felt this uh-huh you know I know Jess was I hope she's okay I mentioned it I know Jess was struggling with getting in and so to see her dunk you know I think when you and Hannah went I kind of see you as this like love bomb fairy like you kind of just throw a little like love bomb fairy. Of love and sprinkle it here and there um, <laughs> in various ways and one of those is being a leader and that gave everyone else the courage to do the hard things uh, you know for me a cold plunge isn't it's challenging but I'm also maybe a little bit of a psychopath because I love it <laughs> and, yeah um you know just mentioned she was really nervous and like struggling and she dunked her head and I was like yeah Steph, I think it, it was a little challenging for you, wasn't it? I know you were nervous about it. I was nervous. Um, it was, again, something very new. Um, I, I think I was not really trying to think about it too much because I'll, I'll psych myself out type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was good that we had the, the Wim Hof breathing before that to really get calm down, which you may have planned that on purpose, I think. You think? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, it's so interesting. The weekend was like building on each other as we went throughout. I'm like, oh, yeah, no way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I knew, like my mindset is always, this is what we're going to do and I have to do it. Like there's no choice. There's no going back. Like this is a hard thing that's going to make me better and I have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, like the initial getting in uh, was was kind of hard. For sure. Uh, definitely that like initial shock and trying to calm yourself down. Because I had a couple of like hiccup breaths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was trying to, to slow back down. But I mean, once, once you get into a place of like stillness um, and focus, then you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's and I, I mean, the dunking part I was like, again, do I want to dunk? Maybe not, but it's going to be good to, to do that. And I'm always like, I want to get the full experience. So here yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing is a lot of people want to build more confidence in their life. Right. And what you guys did was you practiced it so many times because for some people, it was something new and uncomfortable for them to meditate with a group of other people. You know, for some of them, it was uncomfortable to share one on one some vulnerable things with their partner. You know, for others, it was actually the off land workout and they felt super out of place and uncomfortable and yet they showed up and did it anyways. So and for some people, it was everything. The whole weekend was like, this is all out of my comfort zone. You know, what am I doing here? Um, And so I think by experiencing these things, you guys were able to, you know, go back with this new set of confidence for yourself and your life, because when you choose to do hard things, you build confidence in yourself because you're like, I do do what I say I'm going to do, right? Like I always keep my promises to myself and I choose and I overcome the thing that I thought that I couldn't do. So for the people that are at home listening to this right now, it's like that's what you have to start building in your life is these practices and maybe it's just these experiences 
of going out and trying something new, putting yourself in an uncomfortable scenario and, you know, also doing something that you thought you couldn't do, like choosing to do it and to not quit when you feel like you want to quit, you know, overcoming it's overcoming. That's going to give you that confidence. You overcame that cold plunge that sucked and was so cold you know, and that's why you're able to build more confidence in yourself because you're like, I can do these things. And that's the thing is once you guys realize like what you're actually capable of, then it's like there's the opportunities are literally endless. Yeah, they, they are. And I remember like one of the one of the things I always tell myself in those hard situations um, is I'm like, OK, I am really cold and really uncomfortable, but this is not forever. Mm-hmm. Like this is another minute of my life, maybe. This is not forever. Yeah. You can get through another minute. Yeah, that's so good. And my, actually, when I got out too, I was like, I, I don't really know how to describe how I feel, but I don't hate it. Like, I think I feel really good. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it's weird, weird kind of feelings, but. Yeah, I think of all the X in this program and in the retreat has really taught me like asking myself, are you, are you really done? You know, when you're, you get to the gym, you don't want to work out, you don't want to be there. And you're just like, Oh, whatever. And then you're struggling because you're in a new gym and you don't have the same equipment you normally would have. And you just get in this funk. So recently I had a workout where I I was like, I can't, that's not who I am anymore. You know, I I need to finish it out. I need to see it through. Um, So that's that the program has really instilled in me is, am I really done? Or am I kind of just bitching out? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. I a little more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. And that's the thing too is, you know, what you just did is you tied your identity to the version of yourself that you are creating and cultivating and really unleashing inside of yourself because before you would allow yourself to make excuses and now you're actually saying, no, that's not who I am. Who I am is I finish the things that I say I'm going to do. And by drawing your identity from these strong character traits, that's what's going to get you to create a whole different life for yourself. Because when you're consistently doing that, your results, your progress, and where you go is going to be so different than when you were always kind of just, you know, letting things slide, so to speak. Um, Okay, so last question before we end today's show. We'll start with uh, Chelsea this time. If you had to give people one piece of advice for going after personal growth and personal development in their lives, and they really want to see change, right? It's the scenario they're in. Just imagine they are in toxic relationships. They are, you know, settling for a job that they know is really not where they're meant to be. They're unhappy. They're also self-sabotaging with food and alcohol. And they're just living this life that is like not a life that they're happy with. What would you say to them in order to start making, you know, those changes and cultivating a life of personal growth and development? If it's on your mind, it's on your mind for a reason. Mm. You know, it can get very overwhelming. It's it's almost like arrows just flying at you of health and fitness and nutrition. You've never picked up a weight or you, you know, you used to be really athletic and now you're not. um, And you don't have time to read, you know, whatever. You can make all these excuses. If it's on your heart, then it's meant for you to do it. It's time for you to do it. 100% invest in yourself. It is the best thing that I personally have done for myself. And I have grown so much from who I was last July until today. And I have so much more to go. You know, the work isn't done. Pick up a book, even if it's five minutes a day, starting to build on those habits. If you have a couple of days where you realize like, oh, I haven't read in a couple of days. You want to read because that's just what you do now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, if, you know, people that are struggling financially, like maybe you can't invest in a big program, mm-hmm. but maybe you can invest in the calls. Maybe you can afford, you know, 20 bucks a month. Um, maybe you can afford 20 bucks a month for Audible so you can listen to these things in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know finances are a big reason why people hold back. And it's 100% worth it to invest in yourself. So I would just really encourage them to look at where they can can readjust and um, put that time and effort into yourself. Because if you can afford to go out and eat three times a week, mm-hmm. you can afford to invest in yourself. Oh, gosh, that's so good. I, 
I love that you mentioned that. And also just to remind people, there are unlimited free resources. So even if you have no money to spend in this department, there are so many free podcasts like the one that you're listening to. YouTube videos from so many different people, amazing speakers and teachers and educators and so many different people that you have immediate access to for free. Uh, I agree with the book thing because people who, you know, you want to learn from, they put all their best things in their book, obviously. So it's kind of like a condensed version where you can get everything that you want, you know, from them to learn from them. They always put their best things there. So I agree. Grab a book, grab an audible, um, listen to some YouTube videos and just go after what it is that's in your heart. Because if it's pulling on your heart, like you mentioned, it's there for you to do so. Um, I love that you mentioned that. I think it's very helpful. Stephanie, if somebody is looking for personal growth and development in their life, but they are in the habit of making excuses for themselves that feel really justifiable, but they're really making excuses, what would you say to them? Uh, well, if, if they are trying to justify them, like you're, you're just lying to yourself, to be honest. <laughs> you're, you're just sitting here lying to yourself. Um, so you, you got to start taking the personal accountability to, to say, this is not serving me. Again, you have to start small, but I also think that like your environment can be a part of that as well. Um, so like if you talk about reading a book, like I, I personally have a hard time reading books <laughs> though, actually. Um, but maybe you need to, to get outside and go to the park. Um, you, you can take a walk around the neighborhood. I think like YouTube was a big thing back when um, all the shutdowns happened. Mm -hmm. I was having a grand old time in Planet Fitness, which by the way is another way to start small. <laughs> yeah. um, I was get, doing my thing in Planet Fitness, everything shut down, um, and then home workouts. That's what everybody was doing. I hate home workouts. Yeah. I need the community um, of the gym yeah. to, to do something you know worthwhile. But there's a lot of people on YouTube that have like, oh, this hit exercise. Um, or, you know, dumbbells only, bands only. Like you can go and you can search and you can do these workouts at home. Like if you're not comfortable or you don't have the confidence to go into the gym just yet, that's a great way to start. Yeah. I tell people like I use the First Form app, right? Mm -hmm. for, for tracking things. Me too. Um, obviously you have to pay for that now. Mm -hmm. um, a significant amount of money, uh, right? And versus like my fitness pal. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if you're not willing to spend the money on that yet, you can start with that and, and try and start tracking. Um, or I tell people like, you don't necessarily have to have any macros or goals necessarily. You can just make an effort to start putting in what you're having right now mm -hmm. uh, and start to learn from that and, and learn the numbers and how that's going to make you feel or how that's going to change your body kind of thing. There's a lot of ways to, to start. Yeah, I love that. So start small and start with things that you can be um, actionable about today. And if you'll do that every single day, decide to take an action that's going to lead you closer to where it is that you want to go, right? So if you are in that scenario of just living a life that you know is not the life you're meant to live, don't overwhelm yourself with having to figure it out right now or have the perfect plan of the life that you do want to live. Just say, okay, what are some positive actions that I can take today? Whether that's going for the walk, you know, meal prepping or getting to the gym or doing an at-home workout that'll look different for everybody. But I think those are some easy ways for people to start. Well, guys, it's been awesome having you guys on today's show. Thank you so much for all of your wisdom and just experiences that you were open about. I know the listeners appreciate it. So thank you guys both. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, of course. All right, guys, you know the drill. If you enjoyed today's show, please do me a favor. And first off, if you want to check out Stephanie and Chelsea, they are linked below. So check them out. Shoot them a message. Let them know what you thought about today's show. Uh, make sure to rate and review the show on Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts. That's the way that the show grows. If you're on YouTube, you can subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you thought, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.